How do we do this? Um, there's a saying in every story, every most important thing in storytelling, is a structure that is known as the hero's journey. What the hero's journey is, is the introduction to the story and the obstacles and trials that the character goes through. Every story has this, Star Wars has this, they meet a mentor figure, they have different obstacles, and in the end, they change. Every story has this, the hero's journey. Um, so the question is, why do we go through it? Why do we follow a dream, a goal? In Steven Spielberg's AI, Artificial Intelligence, a film I consider his masterpiece, it is said that the single greatest human gift is the ability to chase down our dreams. And that's true. About a year ago, I was offered the chance to work on a tribute to Steven Spielberg. Um, a tribute uh, that we presented to him at the Jacob Burns Film Center and later the Directors Guild, uh, not the Directors Guild, the Producers Guild of America. And uh, the tribute would be a, a four or five minute tribute to him. And I was asked if I would like to be involved in the project. And what my job was, was to go through every Steven Spielberg movie and take out moments that were montage worthy, moments that would define him. And then I would give these clips to the editor and he would edit them together for this tribute. So like I said, I went through every Steven Spielberg movie. And I, once again, I realized why I loved him so much. The flights of fantasy, a limitless imagination, limitless creativity. I couldn't believe it. And then it, gave, it got close to the event and I thought over myself, I was going to meet Steven Spielberg. So I go into this hall, and there are other luminaries of his day. He was with Ang Lee, John Sayles, Deborah Wingham, who was the voice of E.T., um, Ron Howard, who introduced the piece that I worked on. And I walk into this room, and I sit down in my chair, and I look over across me, just several feet away from me, and it was Steven Spielberg. Now, when you have a dream as a kid, you carry it with you your entire life, you don't even know if it's going to come true or not. You don't even know what it would look like. Because it seems so far away, so unattainable. But I saw it that night, and that dream was Steven Spielberg. Right in front of me. And man, one time he looked, he looked at me. And for once, we had a shared experience. And I, Ron Howard introduced the piece. And all I could do was look up at the piece Look over at Stephen. Look at the piece. Look over at Stephen. And I knew that he was watching something that I had worked on. And, and in another light, it was something that I went through all these clips and I took out all these clips that were my favorite moments. And I got to share them with him. Like going up to him and saying, You remember that part? I love that part. It's the same thing. And after it ended, everybody got up. And I didn't know what to do. I was thinking, This is, this is it. This is the moment. I thought, how is this going to happen? Should I be introduced? Should I just go up there? I don't want a first meeting to be a bad meeting. He has more security around him than a good meeting. I didn't know what to do. And finally, the moment had passed and he was gone. I wouldn't meet Steven Spielberg. I cannot tell you the ultimate finality of it all to know when you've gotten so close to something and it'd be taken away from you, to be crushed. It's really a crushing thing. I did, however, meet Ron Howard, though. He went up to me and asked me where the bathroom was. I said, yeah, it's, it's, it's over there. And then it was that, that moment that I realized the bathroom was that way. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would not meet Steven Spielberg. And it's something that haunted me forever. There would be times for weeks and months afterwards 
where I would get so angry I couldn't even breathe. And I thought, was that it? Had I screwed this up? Had I was given the greatest opportunity ever and screwed it up? Would I ever have a chance to do it again? Was I meant to do it at that time? But I had to put a positive spell on it. Some might say, well, you're an idiot. You should have just went right up to him. Which is what I said to myself many times. But I also have to put a positive spin on and say, yeah, that wasn't meant to mean at that point. But there will be a time when I will. And maybe it's my Catholic upbringing, but I truly believe that everything happens for a reason. And I knew I would meet him one more time. So I'll keep going. Um, you know, this is not uh, an easy thing to, uh, to pursue in life, a career that is fueled by the arts. Storytelling is important to me because I feel that it is um, with us every day. What happens when we fall in love? What happens? What's the first thing we do when we're lucky enough to fall in love with someone? You tell them your stories and they tell you yours, theirs. And then together you create your own story. And that story is passed on. Every experience you have, everything is passed on. People learn from it. People grow by it. It's the most important thing in my life that I feel. You know, but choosing a career at the arts, it's difficult. And despite all obstacles, you must continue. You know, Picasso, actually, before we get to there, there's this movie called Being There with Peter Sellers. And it's a movie where the character of a simple-minded young fellow suddenly is thrust out into the national spotlight. And at the end of the movie, for some reason, he walks on water. Now, people don't, people say, well, maybe this is a Christ reference. But I see it as something more. He walks on water simply because he doesn't know he can't. He's simple. He doesn't know he can't. And if you apply that to everyday life, because what the fact remains is, you know, there's a whole thing about struggling. It's like the parents tell you, oh, we don't want you to struggle. That's terrible. Well, you know, that's something you have to do. That's life experience. If you don't struggle, you won't have, you won't, you won't never reach your goal. Because struggle is what gives life meaning, not victory, struggle. And you quit struggling and they beat you. Because you have to put out your mind that you can't do something. Because if you don't know you can't do something, you can do anything. Picasso once said that if they take away my paints, I use pastels. If they take away my pastels, I use crayons. If they take away my crayons, I use pencil. If they stripped me naked and threw me in prison, I'd spit on my finger and draw on the walls. You have to fight for your art. You have to fight for your goal. You see, going back to the whole thing of being able to move mountains. You see, sometimes we think that when things don't go the right way, uh, we think all is ended. Well, that's not true, as I can truly attest to that. It's always a beginning. Always. Because greatness comes not when things go always good for you. Greatness comes when you're really tested. When you take some knocks, some disappointments, when sadness comes, when you're forced to grow up a little bit. Because only if you've been in the deepest of valleys can you ever know how amazing it could be to be on the highest mountain. And then again, there's always panic <laughs>